Hey, what is up, guys? It's your voice feed here, and today we're gonna be going over five builds you can try right now in solo queue, have a lot of fun, and also play the meta. These are builds that pros are currently going that I think scale very well in solo queue. They're gonna help you get a lot of farm, scale well into the late game. I know I keep saying scaling, but... <laughs> But like, that's kind of how I see solo queue. You really want to have heroes that can just be well-rounded, right? So be in the meta. That's generally why heroes are in, are in the meta. They're just super well-rounded. Or they have some, like, crazy spike. And then on top of that, right, they, they often scale. Uh, it makes Dota a lot easier to play when you have heroes that can scale, especially in pubs. And so people love to play heroes that can do that. For instance, in the recent TI meta, Tiny was huge, right? Now, OD is pretty big. It's a hero that scales, has a great laning stage, very well-rounded. But all right, let's get into the builds. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. So the first build I want to talk about is Falcon Blade BKB Refresher Razor. If you guys haven't been following the pro scene at all, you know that this build is crazy good right now. Razor is one of those heroes that I really like in solo queue for a couple of reasons. Number one, he scales. Number two, he has a great lane. And he's kind of one of those heroes that, let's say you pick it second phase, right? In, in ranked, okay? You don't know what you're playing it into. You know the position four or five, but okay, how much does that actually change? A little for Razor, but not too much. Generally, it's not going to matter very much. And so... Often what's going to happen is you're going to pick Razor as your safe laner, right? You can pick it off lane in mid as well, but I, this is mainly, I, I like playing a safe lane quite a bit. You're going to pick it. They're going to pick like a centaur. They're going to pick like an underlord. They're going to pick like an axe and you're going to own them. Now keep in mind, Razor doesn't own them at level one. So if you do end up picking this build, play a little bit passive until you're level three. That's really when you start going crazy. The damage steal almost doubles and the length duration goes up by a second. So it basically does double. And uh, yeah, as long as you play around that timing, you don't, you don't go too aggressive at level one, even level two for, for that matter, you're going to be good. Now, why is this build so key? Well, essentially, Razor has some of the best talents into the game. And so he doesn't really need to build damage items. Literally, none of these items really give you damage. Falcon Blade gives a little bit. BKB gives a little bit. Uh, and, and Refresher gives none. However, they all let you just go in. And the thing about Razor is Refresher is so incredible on this hero for three reasons. Number one, it refreshes BKB and having two BKBs on a hero that is required to be melee range essentially to do damage, right? Eye of the Storm, even Static Link to some extent. You kind of need BKBs to do anything. On top of that, your ulti can be used twice at the same time. Right? So even if you have one going, you refresh and use it again, you just get two eyes of the storm. And it's better than you think, because you might be like, okay, it's double the damage, right? That's great. But most importantly, it's double the armor reduction. And armor reduction is one of those things where the lower you get someone, the better, right? The closer to zero, every single armor tick towards zero is a little bit better, right? Going from 10 to five armor isn't as good as dropping someone from five to zero armor. When you get someone to zero armor, they get annihilated. When they get dropped into native armor, they get shredded, and this is what happens with Refresher, Razor, and the Eye of the Storm talents, which a lot of people are taking right now, uh, at least the level 21. You just drop people into negative armors, and they get removed. It's quite ridiculous. And finally, the third reason is that you can actually have two static links going at the same time. I didn't know this at first, but you can. And so you can steal, like, up to basically 400 damage if you really maximize it, uh, which is a rapier. So a lot of potential in this build. It's a ton of fun. Good lane. Make sure you're farming. Don't be afraid to pop your ultimate to farm if you're going to run this, okay? Just use your ultimate to farm, spam your Q, get your Sage's Mask early on. You can even buy clarities while farming. Just get the waves out. Uh, if you want to know the skill build, it's it's quite simple. You just generally put two points in link, right? So you start the lane with your plasma field, sometimes static link if it's an easy lane. Then you take the next two points in, in static link. You should have static link level two by level three. And then after that, you're going to max out your Q. You want to not max out Static Link most games, because if you do and they avoid you, you can't really farm and it feels pretty bad. So make sure if you do max your W, you really got to be dominating the lane, like super hard. All right, getting into our second build, we have 
Hood Axe Tide. Now, I'm not going to get into this one too much. All I'm going to say, like, there's a couple things I want to say about this build. Number one, you really need to go face boots. Like, please don't go mana boots. I, I think mana boots are just horrible on Tide. This hero needs armor. Number one, buy face boots. Number two, buy a soaring. Number three, buy hood. Now, the nice thing about hood is if the laning stage is a little bit difficult for Tide Hunter, you don't have to complete the hood right away, but you can pick up the casual ring of health for the laning stage, right? Because what a lot of people will do wrong, I see this all the time with off laners, it's ridiculous. Um, what people will do wrong is they'll rush a soul ring on like Tide, and then they're just constantly sacrificing 170 HP as if that's a resource that they just have. It's like, nah, nah, you don't really have that. So this hood build, which, you know, is pretty common on Tide, gives you regen for the lane. Nothing crazy. Phase boots, you can buy one. However, the big thing here is the axe. Now, why axe? I've actually had discussions with people where they're like, why is Tide Axe even being purchased? And before Blink, by the way, right? There are even some builds where you don't buy Blink at all. I actually think generally the best build to go, though, is Hood Axe into Blink. But um, getting back to the point, the nice thing about the Axe, well, there's a few. Number one, it just gives you the ability to reduce armor, slow and do damage to enemies in an AoE. That's literally what it does. So in team fights, okay, it's good right? But there's a couple big things. Number one, you instantly clear waves. You one-shot waves. Tidehunter is a hero that naturally can't be ganked, and so when he can just instantly clear waves, the amount of map control you can you can apply is ridiculous. On top of that, you can flash farm the camps, all the nearby camps, because when you gush the camps, then you anchor smash, you just basically annihilate the camps as well. You can take stacks. You can gush multiple camps at the same time, and then anchor smash the camps at the same time. So you you basically turn into a scaling maniac as an offlaner, and it, it's ridiculous how how ahead you can get on this build. And finally, the, it's just really good at providing vision as well. If you hit an enemy, I believe it gives vision. You guys could check me on that. Pretty sure it gives vision, and that's just huge, right? Being able to just scout things out, slow people in an AOE, cancel blink daggers. Uh, it's quite nice for taking Roshan. I mean, regular gushes as well, but even if you don't have a Lincoln's Break, you can do it anyway. There's just a lot of utility, but the main one is the fact that you get to shove waves ridiculously easily on the one of the best wave shove heroes in the game, and it just also makes you really tanky. Compared to just going something like Blink, going Ags, where you can replace Blink with the uh, Point Booster and Gauntlet, I mean, um, what is it called? Ogre Axe, you just have another what? 400 HP. If you get gone on, that could be the difference between living or not easily, so... I'm definitely a huge fan of this build. I recommend giving it a shot. And let's get into our third build, and that is 2 Null 1 1 Treads Raindrop Clarity into Kaya Sanj, Queen of Pain. Kaya Sanj is a very popular item right now. It's being purchased on many heroes Storm Spirit, Queen of Pain, Ember Spirit, some games, Void Spirit, very popular item. Just kind of gives you the ability to farm frontline, just unbelievably well rounded item. Very, very well-rounded item on these initiating magical damage heroes. It's just so good. And Quap is definitely one of the best right now. She's one of the better laners in Dota, I would say. So she has this great laning stage. She farms quite well, as long as you don't overcommit to maxing dagger in the mid lane. You farm very well with Scream of Pain, so I recommend taking generally, at most, two points in dagger. Sometimes three is okay if you're owning the lane, but usually not. Uh, you just want to stick to Scream of Pain. And yeah, the main gist behind this build is that there's a lot of utility behind Quap. What people are actually going is magic damage. Yeah, you heard that right. People are going magical damage builds. So what does that entail? Well, the most common build that I've seen is as follows. It's all the stat items that I told you. Please buy the stat items. Don't skimp. They're very important so that you hit a ridiculous minute 16, 17 timing where you're just stupid tanky and can flash farm. Um, but yeah, after the Kai Assange, often people still go back for BKB, even though they have Assange, it's just like, you do a ton of damage, you, you shove the lanes well, Quap often gets focused and bursted after she blinks, so you kind of just need it even with Kai Assange. Not always, but most games, I would say. After that, this is where things get a little bit weird, there's frankly a lot of builds you can go. If the enemy team has a ton of physical damage, you can go Shiva's, it's really nice for disrupting the backline, and I often recommend picking up the shard, being able to blink on people and silence them, do a little bit of burst damage, right? Get the silence off, scream on them, and then tank the attention is really nice. What I mean by tank the attention is with this Kai Assange stats BKB build, you're just ridiculously tanky. You're gonna have way over 2k HP, status resistance, and of course at some point magic immunity. And so you just jump the backline, you can burst the most supports, and then you, you get gone on, you live, nine times out of ten you live, 
I would say 99 out of, a, you know, 100 times you live if you're having a good game. <laughs> and then you just turn it around again, right? You just go in and out, in and out, in and out. It's really powerful. You farm fast, you're tanky, and you have really good talents as well. So this build kind of just works. If you don't know what co-op's talents are, I'll quickly go over them and then get into the next build. So level 10, she has 11 strength, so she just becomes ridiculously tanky. At level 15, this one can vary. Both talents are good in my opinion, but um, one is 30 attack speed, the other is shadow strike damage instances. I would say 30 attack speed is generally better. At level 20, it's AoE shadow strike or scream of pain damage. I actually think when you're going this like blink Kaya Sanj build, it's better to take the scream of pain damage so you can clear waves more efficiently. You can blink on the waves, scream of pain, and I believe it one shots the waves, which is really good utility in the mid to late game when you're just trying to get out the waves, get map control, and get your next item. And finally, level 25, she has a blink cooldown talent, which is insane, and a spell block talent. Both are ridiculously good. The blink cooldown talent with the shard is so nice. It's just so much mobility, so hard to catch, so much disruption. The amount of impact you can have on such a low cooldown is ridiculous, so huge fan of this hero. Coming in at number four, we got Wraith King. This is just a right-click right Wraith King build. I think it's just so good right now. This hero is a really nice laner, which is kind of surprising because he got nerfed a bunch. But either way, here's the build that I recommend. You start the lane with two gauntlets, two branches, a quelling blade, and tangos. After that, you're going to build into uh, armlet. So the nice thing about this is it gives you a helm of iron will in the laning stage, making you very, very survivable. And then after you get your armlet, you want to pick up boots and then a soul ring. Sometimes you'll see them buy soul ring. Uh, or pros by soaring in the laning stage and the reason for that is just to spam out skeletons and stuns on the enemy because Wraith King can actually win the lane and so the soul ring build is kind of nice with armlet because the armlet gives you plenty of sustain especially with lifesteal you have no problem with that and then the soul ring is interesting it just gives you armor on a hero that really lacks armor so you completely remove your armor problem with this build because you have armlet phase boots and soul ring so th this hero that usually would die to just get shredded by right clicks doesn't anymore so that's really nice and then, yeah, the Soul Ring is really good just for flash farming. You can spam stun on cams. Most importantly, you can spam skeletons. And then when you show up to fights, you'll actually have enough mana for your ultimate. For instance, I just watched Skeeter play against a Nyx Assassin and an OD. And the Soul Ring prevents him from easily getting his mana drain so he doesn't have ultimate. So it's, it's really good utility. But yeah, other than that, Armlet, Phase Boots, Soul Ring, then Deso, Blink, BKB. You can also go Armlet. Blink if you're playing very fast. You can also go Armlet Deso into BKB without the Blink if they have all magical damage and you just need the front line. You just have to feel it out for the game. And finally, last but not least, I hate to say it, but it is fun. It's uh, really powerful. It's my least favorite here on the game, but Meteor Hammer OD is just so good, guys. It is crazy. It's a really good laner. The Meteor Hammer timing lets you solo kill cores, no problem. I'm not kidding. Try it out. When you hit this timing, you just solo kill most heroes easily. You just astral them, Meteor Hammer, hit them once, and then ulti. And they die. Almost every single time. It's insane. Uh, but yeah, you go Meteor Hammer. After the Meteor Hammer, you want to go Boots into Ags. After the Ags, you go Octarine. After Octarine, you go Refresher. The Ags and the Octarine are going to give you a ridiculously large mana pool. Also, how OD works is Astral Imprisonment steals mana from who you Astral. So, when you have Ags and Octarine, you are constantly increasing your mana pool and decreasing the enemy's mana pool. And if you know anything about OD, how his ultimate works, is it does more damage the more difference there is between you and your enemy's mana pool. The higher mana you have and the lower mana they have, the more damage Sanity's Eclipse does. So, Ags Octarine, where you get two charges of your Astral on a much lower cooldown, and then you have a Refresher enables you to one-shot the enemy team if you build up a bit of mana. You might think I'm kidding, I'm absolutely not, and at level 20, you even have a talent that makes your ultimate close to 50% stronger. It is a ridiculous hero when you hit this timing, and my gosh, if you have not experienced one-shotting people, multiple people, and potentially insta-killing their entire team, with two clicks, you gotta try OD. It's just so much fun. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Best of luck with these builds. If you have any questions, you guys could always message me on Discord. I try to answer general questions. Obviously, I prioritize my coaching students over everyone. But if you guys do have general questions you want to, you know, just talk to me about with Dota, you can always DM me over Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!
And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.